What's up, everybody? Good evening. Welcome back to the Razball Fantasy Football Show Dynasty Edition. We're officially in the offseason. We're very excited to have you with us with the triple box for now. Spoiler alert, we might grab a leg here by the end of the show. Very excited to be with my good friends, Maddie Styles. That is Styles08 on Twitter. And of course, the mothership driver, uh, Captain. What do you prefer? Captain or driver? Captain's good, Brian. You had me at mothership. I feel like oh, I'm wow. like a giant, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I am the Death Star, you know? It's nice. Oh, wow. Death Star <laughs> Captain Bob Lamarco. That's B-O-B-B-Y-L-A-M-A-R-C-O on Twitter. I'm your host, Sky Guasco. Back in the hot seat after a couple weeks off. Had to kind of uh, rinse out that 49er debacle uh, on a few Sundays ago. But I'm good. I'm back. I'm ready. Giants are 2-7, and seven, I believe, in preseason. Picking up pretty nicely here. Uh, Clay Thompson coming off the bench. I'm off the rails, folks, but I'm here for the people, and I'm very excited to get after it. Tonight, we got a special episode for you, diving into our first version of Dynasty Works. This tri box, our brother Derek, who's on the road and not with us this evening, but the, the quad box, as you know it, usually on these episodes, has usually been talking redraft for the most part. But we're in dynasty season, and we're talking dynasty football with a flavor of redraft. Matt, I know that personally for you, you're more on the redraft side than dynasty. Some of us are more on dynasty in general. Some are more on redraft. Matt, I know that you're more on the redraft side of things. From a redraft perspective, before we even get into dynasty content tonight, what does the offseason mean for you as a redraft-focused fantasy football player and analyst? What are you doing as a redraft person this time of year? The Mariners are one and nine, so we are worse than better than your team uh, right now. Um, for me, it's just watching the news, right? We've talked about it a little bit that the we went through the Super Bowl ends and you go into that kind of fantasy wasteland. And then there's, there's a couple of big uh, hurdles to jump, right? We talk about um, free agency rumors, and then we get into... Uh, we start talking about the rookie draft and then the combine hits. Oh, and by the way, uh, the tags happen. And then we go into what happens after the tag. Do we, are, are there trades being discussed or now that we have the tags, we move towards that NFL draft. And by the way, Caleb Williams, you can, you can hear him being an asshole, right? The guy stood up on the podium was kind of a dick. Uh, but the one thing you can hear is you can hear the stock plummeting for Marvin Harrison Jr. It's weird, but he didn't show out. He just showed up, didn't didn't uh, participate in any of the things. So is he going to usurp one of the wide receivers that uh, just got tagged or re-signed? I don't know. There's some people in the industry that are talking about taking him in the first five to 10 wide receivers. And I, I'll tell you what, it's going to depend on where he goes for, uh, for me, for redraft, I just watch the news, right? Uh, we can, we can wait on Bob to give us the news or we can get on Twitter or what, whatever it may be. But for me, I want to see what the news says and I want to know who's going where and if they're dropping into a good offensive situation. I think Mike Evans, who we're going to talk about here stayed in the best situation for him. However, that caveat is, if Baker comes back, I like Mike Evans. If Gardner Minshew or Jacoby Brissett comes in, I'm not sure that I uh, am as big a fan of uh, Mike Evans in the second or early third. That's an interesting piece of that pie. We are going to talk Mike Evans and the Buccaneers in general, kind of their dynasty value, trade values, and whatnot here. Um, but in addition, Matt, just one thing that you had said about the offseason – I list there's a lot of coach speak, right? And you have to take everything they say a little bit just because, but I tend to lean on the negative side. I, I listen more so to the negative reports I get for whatever reason. Uh, I think that holds more weight this time of season versus everybody comes in at the best shape of their life. Everybody looks great on film. Everybody's more healthy than last year, all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm focusing more on like the negative speak, not to shun a bunch of guys, but I'm paying more close attention to that. Bob, I'm going to jump down to you here as we get Jefferson on here in just a second um, on, you know, kind of just the off season in general, right? Today we learned that, you know, Russ is officially out of Denver, right? We knew it was coming. That's not a shock to anybody, but it's officially happened at this point. 
Mike Evans was able to test the market for about 24 hours, then they go ahead and they bring him back for a couple of years. Matt brings up a good point. This whole offseason, we've been talking about what happens to Mike Evans. Well, all of a sudden, Mike's back, but Baker Mayfield's not necessarily locked in. So is he going to come back? What does that change, right? We have another handful of guys are getting cut now, right? The, the running backs are kind of at large still. That's going to be a huge group to jump in. So a lot's going to happen in the next week or two leading up to free agency. What is one just big takeaway in the last maybe 24, 48 hours for you, Bob? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the yeah. stuff's going to be what we talk about today, but it's also the tags, right? So get a little feedback here. I think it's Jefferson, young man. We're going to have to give you a second here. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the one thing I will say is I um, the, the franchise tag situation with Mike Evans on top of it with Higgins and also including Pittman and also Mike Evans now, the wide receiver market went from fun to it's, it's Calvin Ridley, essentially. So I think at this point when I'm looking at the situation, you know, I'm, I'm like – Dynasty wise, when a guy like Mike Evans returns, we have to remember he's going to be 31 this season. And based on some of the information we learned last year, it's not like a complete fall off. I know Julio Jones, people like we saw what happened to him, but most elite wide receivers who have elite wide receiver seasons in their age 30 campaign, they don't have a steep drop off. So it's about 10% production dip. We did the analysis last year on it. So I think there is still going to be value for Mike Evans, but it really, up from a dynasty perspective, opens the door. Is it worth trading him now? Because right now he got the big payday, his value's back to where it was, and there's still the uncertainty. Remember, the Bucks have a new OC. I know Liam Cohen comes from Los Angeles. I know he was with Baker Mayfield with the Rams. I know that they know each other, and I know Baker's probably coming back. But there is going to be a change in scheme. This isn't Dave Canales' offense. So I feel like if you can find somebody who's willing to offer you a late first for Mike Evans and you're kind of a team that's like, am I going to really win this year? It might be worth moving off Mike Evans and heading into his age 31 campaign. So that's kind of like when I when I see the news, you have to think to yourself, is Mike Evans a win now player? And if he is, what is, what is the, what's the trade value? That's the first thing I thought about. I love that. That's a great call, man. And again, we have all the players, right? So I'm, let, me, let me break down here really quickly. So we've got Nate. On our writing staff, he's dropping his article tomorrow morning. It'll be live on football.rasball.com where all of our articles and our great writers are writing free content, folks. Free content, free content. all off season long. Go check it out. That's football.rasball.com. You can go check out all of our articles. Nate's dropping his Dynasty Top 200. And those rankings, obviously, again, are going to be different than redraft, right? But in Dynasty specifically, I'm just going to rattle a couple of names. Jefferson, good evening with you. Give me a good thumbs up, man, if you're feeling all right. I know we got some technical things. It happens. No worries, bro. I'm going to drop this one down to you here in a second, but I'm going to tee everybody up on what the Dynasty outlook looks like from Nate's top 200. Also, though, we have the kind of the scorecard, if you will, from the Dynasty trade chart available on Razball as well. A couple of discrepancies. Let me break these down. Jefferson, I'm going to pop it down to you first. I want you to cherry pick. Let's talk Mike Evans first, but then Cherry pick another uh, name on the buck to jump to here. Baker Mayfield, right? QB 18 to 20 based on the trade chart and Nate's top 200. Rashad White, RB 13 to 18. A little bit more fluctuation there. RB 2. Mike Evans, huge discrepancy, but I think that's going to change quite a bit now that he's officially back. Wide receiver 25 to 46. Okay, 46 in Dynasty. Again, he's older, long in the tooth, those kind of things. So that dips him in the rankings. Chris Godwin, 24 to 28. So he's got that solid RB2 or wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three. And Kate Otten, who we haven't been talking much about, but a nice streaming tight end, tight end 19 to 24. Jefferson, good evening. Welcome to the program, my man. Let me drop it down to you first. Quick thoughts on Mike Evans returning back to Tampa Bay. And then which of these other players, Baker Mayfield, Rashad White, Chris Godwin, or Kate Otten, are you most excited about in Dynasty reference for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Well, for Dynasty, I think the return of Mike Evans is big just for the squad there in Tampa Bay. It's a familiar face. He's a veteran, going to lead the team. Um, I think that's going to ensure that Baker returns in Tampa because Baker did want to return only if Mike Evans returned. That was a big thing I read about too. So if that puts Baker back, they were a pretty good team last season for fantasy wise, Mike Evans as well. But in dynasty, I think for a player like Mike Evans, he's a guy you'd want to have for like this year and next year tops, 
So if you're in a win now in a dynasty league, this is the guy you probably want to go acquire. Uh, the mo- the player I'm most excited about for Tampa Bay is Rashad White. He's really becoming a three down back in Tampa, and so that's a guy that I would definitely jump on and trying to acquire on the Bucks team if I had to acquire any player on that team right now. Question. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, do you think Rashad White's value went up or down with the Evans return? I think it went up because I think now they're a more balanced team, so he'll be able to still get the carries, the workload, and still be able to catch out of the backfield. Um, it also frees up uh, Godwin as well. So I think I think they'll be better in year two if it's the same offense. So you would think their trajectory is going to go up because it's the same guys coming back. It may be a little bit of a new system, but the core guys will all be back. And I don't see yeah, anybody Bob, defensively yeah. that's going to affect them in the AFC South. I mean, sorry, the NFC South. Bob, let me jump back down to you here for the continuity piece. So you talk about that constantly. Pretty much every episode, it's relevant, certainly here with him coming back, but Canales moving on to – Carolina, how much does that concern you with this offense in general? Let's assume Baker does come back. You got the key pieces, but potentially a new offense. How does that make you feel? Well, I mean, they they did it last year, right? Dave Canales was only there for a year. So it's not as if last year Mike Evans was like in this long offense for many years and he's been there for, you know, Mike Evans has been in Tampa for 10 years, but Dave Canales just showed up. So they all had to learn the offense last year. The, I will say this. What I like about the Baker situation is that if Liam Cohen, he and Baker already worked together in Los Angeles. So I brought that up earlier. I think that's going to help. Baker Mayfield's going to know the terminology. He's going to have experience in that offense. So I think that's going to help a lot too. Also got to remember Shane Waldron, who was the OC uh, for the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks. The Seahawks, baby. That's a that's a new one. <laughs> Count there. it. Uh, hey-o. Uh, but – that Shane Waldron came from the Rams, and that's important because Dave Canales was under Shane Waldron. So there's a little bit of a tie there. So I do think the terminology won't be completely different. I think Baker and, and Liam Cohen can kind of come together and figure out a way to kind of mirror what was successful in that Dave Canales offense. So I'm not overly concerned, but we do remember there is going to be a new playbook. So this isn't just copy and paste necessarily. So you also have to factor that in. If you do get an offer for a guy like my like Jefferson just Jefferson just said, hey, Jeff's like, hey man, I'm in. Like, I want him for my win now team. So if I'm like a fringe playoff team and I have Mike Evans, it's like, hmm, do I just give him up now? You know, take that late first round pick, start rebuilding for the next two to three years, and just give him to a win now team. So I think that's the things you have to kind of discuss here. Yeah, that's a really interesting point, Matt. I'm gonna jump to you in a second and get a little bit of a redraft flavor on this with Mike Evans, but in Dynasty. I feel like I have two mindsets here. If I manage Mike Evans in Dynasty right now, and I just got the note that I'm going to have him for another two years, I'm excited about that. I think I want to ship him off while I can, right? Get picks or get a younger receiver, whatever. Um, But if I don't have Mike Evans and I'm in a win now, I'm in the top, say, four to six teams in my league heading into this year, I want to maybe try to acquire him on the cheap because of the age and everything else and people may being a little bit nervous and doing it now before Baker is officially back. I agree with Jeff. I do think he does come back, but he isn't technically as of this podcast, at least. So this might be your window to go get him on the cheaper because people are nervous about it. You see every single year, right? The new hotness, right? We all want the young rookie wide receivers. We want the new healthy unhurt running backs. I get all that stuff. You need some quality veterans, especially at wide receiver to just hold steady the quality points. And Mike Evans is as steady as they come. Matt, I'm going to jump to you. Let me just throw a bunch of numbers at you really quick here. As we all know, Mike Evans has been unprecedented 1,000 or more yards in every single season he's played. Nobody in the history of the NFL has ever done that, including Jerry Rice and everybody else. He's had not just double-digit touchdowns, but 12 or more touchdowns in five different seasons, including three of the last four seasons, 13, 14, six, two years ago, and 13 last year. Most surprising, gentlemen, when you see numbers like that, I think of Tyreek Hill, I think of uh, Devontae Adams, Antonio Brown, Julio Jones back in the day when they were carrying the league. They had 100-plus receptions every year, right? Mike Evans' career high in receptions is 96. The next is 86. Other than that, the rest of his entire career, he has not had more than 79 receptions any other season outside of two. Last year, 79 for 1,255 and 13 touchdowns. So the 13 touchdowns obviously helps buoy him quite a bit. 
Matt, let's turn to you. A little bit of a redraft flavor, but in general, just kind of a thought on Mike Evans. Are the touchdowns going to remain there? They're a non-sticky stat, but without like the volume of the actual receptions, what are you going to continue to be so confident for? Is it just the, the connection with Baker Mayfield? He's the top dog. He's unguardable in the red zone. This offense, what are you actually excited about for Mike Evans in the next two years in Tampa? With Jefferson, I'm with you. Baker comes back. Mike Evans is just the same straight line. He's going to get between 70 and 85 catches. He's going to have 11 to 14 touchdowns. He's going to have 1,200 yards, and he's just going to be boring. right? He's going to be the same dude that he always is. The issue with me is for redraft, you're going to have to pay up too high. So I'm probably out, even though I've loved him for years, and he's brought – uh, excellent return on, on value because I, you know, you could get him in the ninth round last year. I don't know why, but you could, uh, maybe it was the sixth touchdown down year. Uh, but you know, if you look at this guy's history, 10 years, a thousand yards, it's ridiculous. It, I mean, you're talking first ballot hall of fame, unless the uh, voters are morons. Uh, but for redraft, I, I'm not going to pay up because I'm not giving up a second round pick for Mike Evans. Uh, I want a little bit more youth and I want a little bit more uh, probably running back in that, in that spot or, right? A real legit wide receiver, one that's going to get a hundred catches. That's the guy I look for a redraft. And I would say for dynasty uh, sell him right now, because the news is hot about him. He's trending up. Everybody's reading the Mike uh, Evans stuff or hold him until Baker signs back with Tampa and then sell him for even more. That's the way I would look at it. I agree. Matt, you're handling our, um, uh, I know we need, we still need to update our, our rankings after the news here in just the last couple hours and yesterday. So it's all kind of flushing out. Give us just kind of an idea of where you might have Mike Evans ranked right now in PPR. Redraft, I have him at 14. And the only way he moves up, and I wrote this in my um, Time Escapes Me, maybe it was last week when I wrote it. Uh, he stays at 14 if when Baker resigns, and I think he will. Uh, the only chance Evans goes to move up that list is if somebody uh, pulls a diva act and the rumors out of Philly are that AJ Brown uh, has rocked the boat a little bit and there has been some issues. Uh, people have talked about significant others and wives and girlfriends and whatnot. So maybe not what? everything is. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Go look it up. What's going hey, on? Matt, hey, hey, hey. If That's it, some if gossip. Any, I didn't. If, if anyone's got the T, if anyone's got the T, it's Matt. He's in Tampa now. So, so I mean, honest, he, he's, like, he's, got, no. he's got boots on the ground. Yet. So I, it makes no, sense. Still in Texas. For the <laughs> oh, Caribbean. well. Yeah, the movers are packing up the house today and uh, and tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be in Tampa in a little bit. But so I'll talk to Baker when I, once I get there. Uh, but they, I got to get the, the gate key or the gate code so I can get back into Tampa. Uh, but, yeah, there, there are some rumors, and it was on Philly Talk, uh, with Sports Radio, not Mike Gill, not our buddy Mike. Uh, but one of the other guys, I believe his name's Charlie, maybe Charlie Class or something like that. And uh, and he said that there's some rumors floating around that A.J. Brown was a little heading towards the Antonio Brownville and uh, and that there was some animosity between him and Devonta Smith. And Devonta Smith, if you notice, got shut out second half of the year, right? It, it didn't work the way it should have worked. So. Uh, I would just keep your your ear to the grindstone. Is that what they call it? Is that what the old kids yes. say these days? Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure. I'm uh, huge on grindstone, so yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, keep your grindstone to your ear. Mm -hmm. That's what I like say. that. I like grind, that a lot. Yeah, grind your ear stone. Matt's uh, Matt's got Matt's got the T hashtag girl dad, and I want to welcome everybody to the show tonight. We got a lot of extra followers here. It is dynasty season. We're blowing up on the channel, so I just want to give everyone another heads up. And a shout out. This is the Rasball Fantasy Football YouTube edition. Also, for those of you that travel and are constantly on the go, we have a podcast version as well. So you can download that podcast, the Rasball Fantasy Football Podcast, anywhere you listen to your audio. If you're here on the YouTube channel, please make sure to hit that bell and hit the subscribe. It really helps us boost our numbers, obviously, but that helps get the word out and helps build the channel throughout the offseason. We are here with you all the way through the draft season, and we're going to have multiple episodes and free articles all summer long for the Razball content. So make sure you check us out. You can find everything on Twitter at Razball NFL. And again, we'll have the handles for all of us individually moving forward. So once again, welcome everybody to the program. We're talking the Buccaneers specifically tonight with the 
information that Mike Evans is returning back to Tampa for two years. Baker Mayfield, we think, will be there as well, but not officially yet. Guys, we're going to play a quick game. We're going to go around the horn as we get through the episode here. I'm just going to tee up a player. So Baker Mayfield or, and this is in Dynasty, so don't think rankings per se, just in Dynasty, let's say the next three years, who would you rather have on your roster, Baker Mayfield or X player? I'm going to give you that player. We're going to go around the horn. We'll go Styles, Bob, and Jeff. I just want Baker or that player's name. I'm going to give you a couple, move on to another position, and then we'll talk about Rashad White, Chris Godwin, Kate Otten as well. Feel free to drop a comment in here if you want to jump in the chat. We do get to all of our comments every single episode. We're going to play a quick game a little bit, give you guys some time to write your questions in the comment section. We'll be monitoring those and bring those up on the screen here in a hurry. So if you have any quick reactions to the Buccaneers situation, or maybe it's Russell Wilson's situation, or any of these other free agents who have not signed yet, any of these other running backs, predictions, whatever you got for us, drop it in the comment section. We'll get to those in about the next five or ten minutes. But, boys, here we go. We'll play a game. We'll make it quick here. Maddie, I'm going to start with you. Baker, in the next three years, Baker Mayfield or Will Levis? We're talking dynasty or redraft? Dynasty. Dynasty. Uh, Will Levis. Bob. Levis. Jeff. I'm going to go Levis. All right. Like that. Matt, I'm going to go with you here. Uh, let's go Deshaun Watson on the field only. Deshaun no, Watson the next three years. Name. I don't need another name. It's the other Baker guy. Mayfield. Got it. Yep. Bob? Yep. I can't. I can't with Deshaun. I'm sorry. I'm going to go enough, Baker. Jeff? Same? Baker. Okay. Okay. Let's put Russell Wilson on any team. He's a starter for the next three years. Baker Mayfield, Russell Wilson. Uh, he's going to play for the Las Vegas Raiders and throw to Devontae Adams. He'll be back in the uh, AFC Pro Bowl, so give me Russell Wilson. I agree. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Baker. No, you're not. <laughs> no, pretty yeah. sure I am. I'm pretty sure I just checked my notes. I am. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go Baker. I, I think Russell's gonna end up in New England. So oh, okay. New England. Yep. I'm go Baker. Matt, Matt's taking Matt's taking notes. Phil <laughs> we call that we call that brewing the tea for the kids out there. Matt's brewing the tea. I like to see yeah. that. All right. I got two more, two more quarterbacks, and we'll move on here. Baker Mayfield or Matt Stafford next three years? Stafford. Yeah, I'm going to go Stafford there. Stafford as well. Stafford as well. All right, let's move up the ladder a little bit here. We'll go Justin Fields on an undetermined team. We don't know where he's going to be. You can make a prediction if you want to. Justin Fields or Baker Mayfield next three years? Uh, if Justin Fields goes to Pittsburgh or Atlanta, give me Justin Fields. It's Fields. I, can we just? I do want to ask the question though, because like most fantasy leagues and dynasty are super flex uh, or two QB. Yep. They maximize the position. Baker has value. Like he's going to be a top twenty-four quarterback. He's going to have value in these kind of leagues. You know. So I was looking at the dynasty trade chart, and Baker comes up. He's like kind of around one point oh eight in a first round pick. How does everyone feel about that? Like. Jeff, do you feel like you would trade in a two QB or a super flex league? Would you trade 1.08 this year to acquire Baker? Mm, that's a tough Feels one. A little I think, Feels a little I think it, <laughs> Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think it depend, depending on my roster construction and kind of where I'm at with my competitors in the league and kind of where I'm at in the playoffs. If, if Baker gets me over the hump, then I would say possibly. Um, but I – but I'd say yeah. probably not. So that just does seem a little rich for for a dynasty league to say Baker is going to be the missing ingredient to my team. Yeah, one point oh eight would put you probably in the, like the top five in most twelve team leagues. So you're probably like you were in the playoffs, knocked out first round. Is Baker that last spot? I mean, was Baker enough of a difference maker on a per game basis last year in that second flex? But if you are hurting at the second QB spot, let's say you had Deshaun Watson, you know, and you don't have one right now. Yeah, the, I think the thing the thing is with ba the thing is with Baker, and, and we, we we gave Matt his flowers, and rightfully so. But if you look at the stat line, I brought this up last episode. Baker Mayfield stayed healthy when literally seventy percent of the quarterbacks in the NFL did not. So he played every game, and he accrued stats and numbers, which matters. I'm a Frank Gore guy, right? No, no, no Oof. problem with accruing numbers over Lakers a long period Frank of time. Gore, baby. That's not like my not, a, career. not a problem with accruing numbers. 
<laughs> but that does matter because he's in the upper echelon in total points, but in points per game, not so much because he didn't have massive games per se. So as a QB2 in Dynasty, in Superflex, he's fine. But we're talking Will Levis, kind of undetermined, but did have the big four touchdown game, big prospect, first round pick, whatever. Then you have Justin Fields, who we all think has the potential, but will it actually come to fruition? Then you have some unknown guys like, does Russ still have it in the tank? Is Aaron Rodgers going to be around the next three years and healthy? Right? Like, what happened? Matt Stafford should be totally fine with all of his weapons, but can he stay healthy? So I do think it's a valid conversation to have with Baker Mayfield coming off the year that he had with Mike Evans back. We're going to get to Chris Godwin in a second, but first I'm going to turn the page to Rashad White. Same game. Let's make it quick here around the horn. Rashad White next two seasons because it's running backs, unfortunately. In Dynasty, let's go full PPR leagues. Dynasty next two years, Rashad White or Kenneth Walker. Matt? Um, Rashad White. Bob. God, I don't know. That, that's a tough one because I don't really know Ryan Grubb, whoever that I guy either, is. Bob. I have no idea who this guy – like he's a Washington guy. If you look at his stats with running backs, it was very hit or miss. He had a bell cow, then he had a split backfield. And it was very off and on, even at Fresno State. I don't know if they're going to use Zach Cabernet more because of that. I would just go white. I think I think white is going to be the guy. Charbonnet, Charbonnet, whatever the hell it is. I don't freaking know. Yeah, I'm going to go with Rashad White. <laughs> Matt's killing me up there. Uh, but, yeah, no, I think yeah, I got to go Rashad White. White. I think, yeah, I think Rashad White is going to be a top five back the next couple of years. I just think he's getting better, and I just think he's young, and he's a guy I, I definitely want on my team. Interesting. In PPR leagues, I don't disagree. Half and standard, I completely disagree. I've gone over that in my running back articles over the summer. They're all available on football.rasball.com. As a running back specifically, I don't love him, but he is great out of the backfield. That's what matters in PPR. Same question. Isaiah Pacheco, Rashad White, next two years, Matt. It's still Rashad White for me. Oh, my God. It's it's white, but like I think Pacheco's like he's coming. Like it's coming. The workhorse role is coming. Andy Reid's gonna go back to the old ways with Brian Westbrook style. Pacheco's gonna be a I, I it's close. I think it's a, almost a coin flip. Yeah, I'm right there with yeah, it's definitely a coin flip. I'll still take white just because I wonder if the Chiefs do bring in another running back. And if they do, what kind of back is that? I think would be a cool fit for the Chiefs if they brought in Antonio Gibson and kind of a pass catching back, but also a big back to kind of fill both spots behind Pacheco. But if they don't bring anybody in, I think Pacheco could push um, as well for a shot. Why I think we're, I think we're now in a new era of running backs where these younger guys now are going to start being the top five backs. A lot of these guys that didn't get, that didn't get tagged, I think are going to start sliding down. And this is the era of all the new backs. So it's interesting to see which one is going to be though. Okay, let's go with a sketchy name that I'm kind of unsure of. I've been ranking the running backs all summer, and I have a really hard time placing him so far. With all the news with Russ, obviously now he's gone. But the undetermined nature in general in Denver for a number of reasons. Javante Williams, who's a running back I loved coming out of Carolina. I love him playing like as a player, but then he got hurt, had the gnarly injury, didn't really hit his stride till late in the season. But he and Brees Hall had similar injuries, and Brees Hall blew him out of the water. So do we? can we count on Javante Williams, who on paper is a much better prospect and has a better um, uh, projection than Rashad White does? But do you trust Javante Williams, Matt, or Rashad White in the next two years? Uh, the better pure running back is Javante Williams, but I'm taking Rashad White all day. I, I just think from a dynasty perspective, Jaleel McLaughlin is someone to really monitor because I th he was a guy who kind of jumped onto the scene. He was the Sean Payton guy. Like, listen, we just watched what Sean Payton did to Russ. Like, I know it's not – Javante wasn't his guy. So I could easily see McLaughlin taking like a 1B role. Give me White. I think White's still – I think Liam Cohen's history with workhorse backs makes Rashad White uh, um, uh, the pick there. Okay. Yeah, I'm going white as well on this one. All right, let's do the last one here, and we're going to talk Chris Godwin. Ramondre Stevenson, 
or Rashad White? Ramondre Stevenson, Rashad White. Matt, I'll go to you. New regime in New England. Zeke, more or less, most likely gone or diminished role potentially. But Ramondre got beat up last year, but he was on fire at the end there. How do we feel about Ramondre versus Rashad White next two years in Dynasty? Uh, I have no idea what New England's going to do. Um, they may be a complete dumpster fire with a one-year head coach so um i will take the certainty of rashad white i think white's on a different level i think he's right now i mean listen the good thing with alex van pelt the new offensive coordinator that he has history with guys like nick chubb giving them over 300 touches so at least we know ramaja has a chance to be a workhorse so i think that helps his outlook but i think white's closer to like devin a chain alvin Kamara. Jonathan Taylor than he is those next tier down guys. I think he's he's a PPR monster. And he and he averaged like three yards of carry this year. So if he has any efficiency upgrade, uh, you know what I mean? Like it's like he could easily be a first round pick. Yeah, I'm gonna go white again on this one. I think there's too many unknowns in New England. Um, so I'd rather take my chances with white. Got it. Rashad White stealing the hearts of many in PPR leagues. But again, folks, in half PPR, maybe standard, you might want to reconsider just because he doesn't have the efficiency as a pure running back. Let's go to the wide receiver here. Chris Godwin, same game, gentlemen. Chris Godwin or Matt, I'm going to kick it off hot for you. Your boy, Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed, Chris Godwin, Dynasty next yeah, year. I think, I'm, I think you're going to give, we're going to do three or four of these. I don't think you're going to be able to give me a name that I'm drafting after Chris Godwin. So give me Jaden Reed. Okay. Yeah, I think when it comes to Chris Godwin, it's now the situation is, is Baker going to continue to funnel all his targets to Mike Evans? Like over the previous years, it was closer to a 50-50. And heading into this season, I think the biggest issue a lot of people had, including myself, was I didn't think Baker was going to support two you know, top 24 wide receivers, but we thought it was closer to 50-50. Instead, it was like 60-40, 65-35 Mike Evans versus Chris Godwin this season from a production standpoint. Mike Evans finishes as a top 10 receiver. Godwin's more of a wide receiver three. Now, it started looking better down the stretch, but honestly, I think if you could find someone who still has that overall viewpoint of Chris Godwin, I did write up in my article, Liam Cohen, the first thing he said was he's putting Chris Godwin back in the slot. I think that is great. I just don't buy that Baker Mayfield, as good as he played last year, I just don't think Mike Evans is going to be a top 10 receiver and Godwin's going to return to top 20 value with Baker Mayfield personally. So I would say if you could get a late round, first round pick in Dynasty or an early second for Chris Godwin, I think that's reasonable. I think that's, I would definitely make that move, especially if I'm a team that is looking to rebuild a little bit or if I know I'm not going to make a real run at the title this year. I'm willing to dump Chris Godwin in that scenario. So I'm I'm kind of with Matt here. I don't know if I'm going to be taking him over kind of the younger guys like Jaden Reed, for example. Okay, Jeff? Yeah, I'm going to go with Jaden Reed. I think his his upside is way, is way higher than Godwin in that dynasty league with Jordan Love. I think Jordan Love is going to be that guy in Green Bay. He's going to be, I mean, he kind of already proved it. I think he'll be a top 10 quarterback, if not higher. And I think Jaden Reed is going to get a lot of targets and get creative as well with Matt LaFour, giving him different ways of getting the ball. So I think Jaden Reed's a lot higher on that list than Chris Godwin. All right, Matt, I'm going to give one here that you talked about a little bit at the end of the season last year, kind of still unproven, extremely boom or bust, but sky's the limit in that offense. Chris Godwin or Jamison Williams, two years. Next two years, uh, Jamison Williams. I think Bob. Oh, I think ahead, you have to get in now, or you're not going to get in on Jamison Williams. You have you're to get too in this year, otherwise you're not going to have him. Yeah, I got. I got. I agree with Matt on this one. I. I would. Oh, my first instinct was if I'm a win now team, I'd rather have Godwin. But I think Jamison Williams is going to come on. I think it's his time this year. I kind of want to buy stock in Jamison Williams, so I'm going to go Williams. I'm going to say Godwin just because I think Jamison Williams it will be potentially the fourth fiddle in the Lions offense. You, you got Gibbs is still going to catch out of the backfield. You got Laporta and the Sun God. He's just a stud. So I think Williams, 
Is he going to surpass any of those three guys for targets? I just, I don't see it. I think Godwin's got a better floor than Williams. So I'll take Godwin in this case. Okay. Like that. The question is for me, can Jamison Williams be 2024 Deshaun Jackson? Jackson. Who, didn't, who didn't have a grip of catches, but he took the top off and every week you started him because – he could go one for 85 and a touch. He could go yep. three for 130 and two, right? He's the guy, he's your dart throw uh, that I, especially during bye weeks or in a thing like uh Ras Bowl, that's a guy you want on your best ball team at all costs, Jameis mm-hmm. Williams. Yeah, a lot. Dan, a lot. Go ahead, Bob. No, I was going to say, did Stan Campbell's comments this off season kind of gives me more positive vibes towards him because Dan Campbell's like a no nonsense kind of guy. He's like, you know, tough. He literally t- in a press conference when he got the job, he said, "I'm going to bite off kneecaps." Like that's Dan Campbell. So the fact that he came out of the off season and a guy like Jamison Williams could fall into like that luxury speed receiver, not a hard nosed guy. Does he block in the run game? You could tell. Like I could see Jamison Williams kind of falling off Dan Campbell's radar because of stuff like that. But instead, Dan Campbell is like he started playing a little bit better, and you kind of see it in his box numbers down the stretch too. But the first thing he's got to pass up Josh Reynolds, like. Like, listen, you could easily point at J- Jared Goff's history with Brandon Cooks. Like, can he be Brandon Cooks from, like, 2017, 2018 range, whatever that was. I think it was 2018. My apologies. Like, can he be that kind of receiver for him with Cup being uh, – Amon Ra being the Cooper Cup type player? So, I think Sam Laporta, like Jeff brought up, is a really good point, too. Because, like, can – do we trust Jared Goff to support – Three wide receivers and a pass catching running back. He hasn't done it that much. He did it with Todd Gurley and he did it with the Rams that one season. But yes, I agree that Godwin does have an all better floor. But Williams, remember, he was a first round pick. This guy had, tore his ACL heading into the NFL. So I don't even know if we've seen yeah. him fully healthy yet, ready to go. So I'll be interested to see what he does this year. Right, I totally agree, and I think that the, the big a big thing, Bob, is what you just brought up there the the injury coming out of college, basically having a red shirt rookie year. Last year got a little bit better, had a couple of catches for long touchdowns, but hasn't been a consistent piece of this offense. I think that comes on this year. Matt's been t- saying it all season last year and off season now. It's like better to be a year early, right, than a year too late. Because you're right, and it's in 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 redraft. That concept is great, but it doesn't matter as much because if you miss on a Puka Nakua last year in redraft, you're kind of like, ah, shit, you know, whoops, didn't see that coming. My opponent had it, burned me. I didn't get the guy. I'm going to reach for him next year, and I'm going to draft him in redraft. If you didn't get him in Dynasty, you're you're not going to get him, period. Like, he's not going to be yours the next five years. So, Jameis is the guy to have. If you believe him, I think all of us do at a certain cost. Uh, but it just, you know, if you're looking for a more consistent option, Chris Godwin might be that because we've seen it proven. Again, number two wide receiver in 2019 behind only Michael Thomas and uh, hasn't quite returned to form. Are we losing him or is that me? Maybe it's my internet. I think we're losing Scott. All right. Yeah, he clearly didn't pay his internet. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. All right. So we're going to just pick Um, up here. I I do want to ask quickly. Can you guys hear me okay? No, you were in and out there for a second, my friend. Um, We're just going to do really quickly. uh, I'm going to give you a hot second off the screen here to recup that. But Chris Godwin. Buy or sell? Like, are you right now in Dynasty? I think we kind of talked a little bit about his his value, but like, I think he's worth maybe uh, early second if I was trying to get off him type thing. But early seconds are typically you're probably talking to someone who's more of a win now guy, maybe a second flex in a deeper Dynasty league, a guy who needs a second flex starter. That's Chris Godwin's type range, in my opinion. So you're probably looking at a late first round pick because you know those teams are not going to have an early second most likely. So I guess Jeff, first thing that comes to mind is Godwin kind of on your right radar, or would you kind of look to unload a late second and a player maybe like, I don't know, without a name coming to mind, maybe like a, a Romeo Dobbs type player to get rid uh, to acquire Chris Godwin. 
Yeah, I'd consider Dobbs. Um, I think a second round would be kind of where I'd be comfortable with it. If he is really going to go back to the slot and stay there consistently and get targets there, I think his value will increase. Um, I wouldn't give a first. If we're talking about Evans previously in a first, I, I, I'd rather have Evans and Godwin. So I think for Godwin, it's a second or a third uh, for me. Um, if I'm a fringe team, that, like you said, that needs that second spot uh, in a flex. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think the Bucks will be equal to what they were this year, hopefully a little bit better. So I think that it's a player I am looking to acquire, um, as opposed to selling right now. So if you're a win now team, the question is, would you be willing to give up a younger receiver? I know we like Jamison Williams a lot here, so I don't know if we'd be willing to dump him. Like if you're willing to package a second round pick, let's say 2.09 or something like that. And a player of, you know, wide receiver wise, like a Jerry Judy type, maybe a player you're kind of giving up on a little bit. Is those kind of trades something you would look at for Chris Godwin, or you're more like, I only will take him out of value. If you want to take my second grade, I'll get Chris Godwin. I'm not going to throw in another another value asset. What's your thoughts there? Yeah, just a second. I think because I feel like what they're saying in in this upcoming NFL draft, there could be seven first round receivers. So that means that's seven players that in a dynasty league you're looking to acquire. I think you kind of know who a Judy is with Sean Payton. I think Payton's going to just change the whole offense up in Denver. So in this case, I think I'd rather Godwin just because he has that consistency with Baker and with Evans in that offense. Um, So I I think Godwin's a guy I'm looking to get, but I'm not, I'm not giving up too much and it's got to be a value for me because I think you there's potential to draft somebody in a dynasty right now in this upcoming draft that could fill that spot in a year or two for you. Yeah. Okay. Now, Matt, from your perspective, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Your sky's back. All right. We're good. I was like sweating here. I was trying to host for a little bit. I don't even know what's going on. I was just making up shit up at that point. I don't know, man. You know, internet happens. Uh, I wish, you know, eventually someday we're going to be in the full office, the Razzball headquarters. So if I break off again. And we lost them. <laughs> and we lost them. Uh, I will say. I will right. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, you know, you know, football, fantasy football. You're a smart guy. Can you fantasy. recall? In 2023, one Chris Godwin play, one Chris Godwin stat line, one week where he was top three, top five, where he carried your fantasy football team. I can't. Like, I don't remember him being in my article at all. So, yeah, it's just when you're looking at the situation, like the one of the biggest reasons why the Buccaneers as a whole were kind of a sell and or like kind of a mutual. Like when I looked at my top 150 – I was kind of in line with ADP. I didn't really – wasn't off them, wasn't on them. And listen, I was dead wrong about Mike Evans, but I was dead right about Chris Godwin. Like I was not getting any Chris Godwin either because with Baker, the first thing I was gonna, I said was the thing with the Bucs, they were the pass-heaviest offense in the NFL with Tom Brady. So the pass volume was going to take a huge nosedive, which it did. But in reality, what happened was instead of it being 50-50, it went – all mostly to Chris Mike Evans. Mike Evans was awesome. He was better with Baker than he was with Tom Brady. That was not the case with Chris Godwin. Plus, they moved him outside. I don't know why Dave Canales did that. You know, Tyler Lockett for years was in that offense playing the slot. Why won't you just keep Chris Godwin in there? It made no sense. But Godwin's moving back inside, which I think will help. But I also – I Baker had a good year last year. But we saw this kind of with Geno Smith. Like, Geno Smith two years ago had a great year, and then teams kind of had a whole season to view his tape, and they're like, let's take this away. What happens if they start doing X, Y, and Z? So I I don't want to buy Godwin, even though I do like him going back to the slot, which is great. But I, I think what I was trying to get the idea from Jeff, Jeff was that, like, I will take Godwin at a value. If I am a win-now team, and I could get a second flex, and someone's willing to dump a second round pick in my for a second round pick. I would give up my late second for him. Is that worth it? No, I don't. If I'm if I was advising someone, I'd be like, you don't just take a late second for Godwin. But that's kind of how I view it. I would only take him at a value, and I would only acquire him as a win now type player. But at the same time, I don't think the situation has changed enough 
I hope the slot thing comes to fruition, but it's not like the slot receiver dominated last year for the Bucks and Godwin. There was no slot guy last year. There wasn't like Baker was finding the slot receiver over and over again, five for 50 every week. So I don't know. I just think the Godwin thing to me is more of a, I think he's a sell, but the problem is I think right now it's going to be hard to sell. You'll be selling low because I think the news of Mike Evans is going to outshine him. That's how I personally, but from a redraft standpoint, like I have Godwin pretty low in my rankings, but like your wide receiver rankings, where do you have Godwin? Um, I'm going to have to go look. He, he's in the top 60, uh, but my question, would you rather have Godwin in the seventh or Kate Otten in the 12th? I don't know, man. Oh Liam Cohen. Yeah. Wait, go ahead, Jeff. Well, yeah, no, I was just – I wanted to, to, to see y'all's thoughts on this. So we're talking about Mike Evans in a, in a light that he was so much more dominant than Chris Godwin. Godwin only had two touchdowns, so I think there's some positive regression there. I think we'll have more than two going into next year. And on a target share, Mike Evans had 136 targets. Um, for what I'm looking at here, maybe I'm double-check on that. But then I see Godwin has 130 um, when I yeah. triple check that. So, I mean, it wasn't like their target share was completely dramatically different. I'm talking six targets over 17 games. That's not a whole bunch. So I think maybe we're underselling Godwin, maybe, and maybe overhyping Mike Evans a tad. Um, when looking, when looking really at the stats, because I mean, yeah, Evans had the 13 touchdowns of the two. That's a monumental difference there in touchdowns, but I think Godwin maybe is closer to six touchdowns than two touchdowns. Yeah, and I have him at 42, Bob. Currently at 42. Why so, I, yeah, 42? I'm behind ECR and Godwin, and I'm fuzzy. It is what it is, folks. Welcome to the Razzball channel, folks. I get a little fuzzy from time to time. But, so, Jeff, you brought up a good point about the touchdowns, right? So, when we look at this data, by the way, if you look at end zone targets, so at, at end zone target essentially is if you get a target while you're in the end zone. On average, a player converts those on 40%. So if you receive 10 end zone targets, you should have had four touchdowns. Godwin had 10. Last year, he only had one touchdown. So in theory, he should have just off those targets, should have been closer to four. So yes, he should have like another three touchdowns based on that alone. But that's really it. He only had 10 end zone targets the whole season. So if you're looking at his like just where he's getting his targets, Yes, he'll have positive touchdown regression. He'll probably average another point per game. So if you look at, if you just think about it, 17 games, three touchdowns, 18 fantasy points. That's about 1.1. So if you just look at that data in PPR last year, let's see where Godwin was. I'm doing this on the fly, baby. This is good, good TV here. Uh, he had 2.2 fantasy points last year in PPR. If you give him 1.1 fantasy points, that'd be 13.3. That would make him the wide receiver 30. So take it for what it's worth. Wide receiver 30, mid-range wide receiver 3. Okay, I think that makes a little sense. Uh, maybe I'm a little low on him, but Matt and me and Matt are a little low on him. But at the same time, I feel like that's like, you know, that's if Baker is still playing at a really high level. That's if, if everything translates to this new offense. I think wide receiver 30 is a little strong there. Uh, I guess, Matt, from your standpoint, knowing all this stuff, is there any thoughts about moving Godwin up? No. 42 is good for me. I kind of feel the same way. Like, I'm like, eh, because Rashad White's really good. Like, Rashad White's really good. And then Kate Otten, just great name drop. He's emerging. He's only going to get better in year three. I am a little worried because, like, the Rams really didn't use the tight end that much. I mean, Higby had his moments. But remember, they had that 11 personnel thing, the three wide receivers. That's what they're known for in Los Angeles. So now, do the Tampa Bay Bucks have that third receiver? No, it's probably Kate Otten. But overall, I think that's really it. I, I don't know if Sky is even a lot at this point. I, does anybody have a status check on Sky? I think he's back. He's ready to rock. All right, good. All right, I think we can wrap this puppy up. Let's talk a little. It's already at the 50-minute mark, so, you know, wrap it up. Yeah, if you could hear me, <clears throat> awesome. If you can't, then uh, I'll just drop off again. Sorry about that, folks. I just want to invite everybody from the Twitter page. I know we got about 250 followers on the Razzball Twitter page joining us tonight on youtube here so make sure you flash over to the youtube page give us a subscribe and a like hit that bell and leave a comment below we're up here multiple times a week and we got all of our articles for free on football.rasball.com you can check out all of our rankings 
Uh, they're one, two, three dollars less than three dollars. Does that make sense? Yeah. Even, so even this guy's articles are free. This guy up here, Matt, and that Matt, yeah, what, that was. It was that hard for you, Bob? It's just math. It's math. It's not a big deal. Um, so, Matt, when I was your age, we would call it a five finger discount. You know what I mean? Free ninety nine, yeah. if you will. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for Bob, some reason, you when you said that, when you said that, I thought of what are the five figures say to the face? And he slap like the day. <laughs> like, I don't know why I thought of that. Uh, could I just ask the team really quick, just to get back on track with football? Uh, with Mike Evans off the off the free off now. Higgins and Pittman off. Like, is there like any excitement? Like, Sky, what's your thoughts about Ridley? Do you think he's going? Like, is there any excitement? Yeah. Is there like an under? Like, is now what's the market really like for a team looking to acquire a receiver? Yeah, Ridley's going to be awesome somewhere, but I think Marquise Brown is the uh, interesting guy nobody's talking about that I think could do well. Um, maybe heading back to Baltimore, so low volume with Greg Roman, but did play with him previously there. I could see him following back there, and they could use a little deep threat help. So I'll go with Marquise Brown as kind of a sleeper uh, free agent left. I, I think from a dynasty perspective, we talked about him last time. I think Darnell Mooney is someone that I really That's my guy. think you could probably get dirt cheap. Like third, If I'm a win-now team, I could think of probably get him for a late third-round pick. Like, I don't think anybody cares about him. And I, there's a lot of rumblings about him meeting, going to the Chiefs because of Matt Nagy, which makes a ton of sense. And the Chiefs really do need a wide receiver, too, behind Rasheed Rice. So, like, that's another aspect about free agency. Like, you know, make sure you're monitoring where these players land because a lot of these guys are forgotten, especially good players. Like, Darno Mooney was a thousand yard receiver a few years ago. So, I'm not saying every single receiver that's a free agent is going to land somewhere to make them relevant for dynasty. But at the same time, this is a time to evaluate, especially when you get closer to the draft. People love third round picks for some reason. They want to draft X, Y, and Z players. But remember, you might be able to get a guy in his early 20s, still before his prime, who landed in a really good spot to really that could give you win now opportunity versus a dart through throw third round pick like Josh Downs types last year. I think about who are good players played. Okay. But they didn't really help you win this season. So there's some, some things you have to navigate and stay with us. We'll be breaking it down next week. We'll be in the teeth of the negotiation period. I'm excited for that. I love it. I totally agree. If anybody else doesn't have any uh, deeper roster, Jeff, you want to give out another free agent, maybe before we wrap up. Yeah. Well, I wanted to say one thing about Ridley. So I'm also a partial Jags fan. I know it's it's been a long time. I finally got good again. But I was reading up hey, on shout, his shouts up to 1996 to... though. Dude, Mark Brunell? Mark yeah, Brunell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Ke the whole, Keenan McCardell. Oh, the lefty Jimmy quarterback. Like, you like that? Oh yeah, the lefties. <laughs> Blake just went Ridley though. So with the trade from Atlanta to Jacksonville. So Atlanta gets a compensation, uh, a third round pick out of that. So if the Jags signed him, they would get a second. So the, the kind of the rumbling is that they're not tagging him or anything, letting him hit free agency and then signing him. And by, by signing him as a free agent, they don't give up a second. So I think Ridley still returns since they tagged uh, Allen. So I think Ridley is going to stay in Jacksonville. Personally, Makes sense. and then Marcus yeah. Brown, I think he might, depending if somehow Justin Fields stays in Chicago and the Commanders get Caleb Williams, I think Marquise Brown might follow Cliff Kingsbury to the Commanders since he traded for him in Arizona. I think there's a bit of a connection there, so I think that's a team to look out for. Because I think Curtis Samuel's out, McLaurin is still there, but I think they could use a second receiver there um, and a King Cliff Kingsbury offense. Is Jahan Dotson just like dead to you emotionally? Or are you just out on him completely? Yeah, I know. I could see it in your face. I could see it. I could see it like you're like you like you went on one date with him. He's he made he had he, and you're out. You're like, really? At dinner? I get it. It's all good. No, I thought it was the same. And actually, you know what I thought would be crazy if the commanders made a trade with the Arizona Cardinals to get Kyler Murray to back with him, and they use that second second overall pick to kind of not necessarily the second pick for Murray, but, you know, figure out based on that. And then the the Arizona Cardinals can really hit the reset button with a young quarterback like uh, Jaden Daniels or something. 
That's just I just feel like saying that on TV, on, on on the video, so that's fine. There's no dynasty implications there at all. Just throw it throw it out there. I love it. We got a lot of the content coming up, folks. We're up on an hour. We're gonna get out of here, but we want to appreciate everybody for coming in on the episode. We got a ton more dynasty content. We do sprinkle in some redraft in the off season here for you as well. Once again, please make sure to jump over to Razball on the YouTube channel if you're visiting us through Twitter x right now you can also jump on to the podcast side for those of you on the go there when the audio that's rasball fantasy football youtube channel rasball fantasy football podcast you can download both those for free make sure to subscribe hit the buttons leave a rate and review we much appreciate it those of you on youtube or the podcast make sure to follow all of our content on x that's at rasball r-a-double-z-b-a-double-l-n-f-l you can find all our content as a company there and by the way, it's also baseball season, so you can get all of that pre-draft coming up on the channel there for you as well. But for all of you football degenerates that are with us all season long, you can catch all of us there individually as well. We want to give thanks to my man Jefferson for coming in a little bit late. Look, you had the technicals coming up early. I carried you. I had it late. You carried me. That's what we do here. Little push, little shove. I love it. We got Matty Styles in the back corner there. Heading a little Shout bit Shout out to Raz now. Slam. Raz Slam drafts have kicked off, Bob. I know you're you're probably around your fourth round of your Raz Slam picks. Who you got? Is that baseball? Okay, Sky, back to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and we also have Bob Lamarco with us this evening as well, taking carving time out of his evening to jump on with his uh, subordinates. So we appreciate everybody hanging out with us. Once again, thank you to everybody jumping on the Twitter. Big night for us, and we'll be back with you the rest of the week. All the articles dropping on football.rasball.com early in the morning every single day. All of us for free. Go ahead and check it out. Once again, I'm your host, Sky Guasco. We will catch you next time on the Rasball Fantasy Football Show. We are out of here.